So evolution of the drones um, uh, goes back actually to the days of, of Vietnam. And the uh, main uses made of the drones has been and actually continues to be for surveillance and for spying. What is really fascinating uh, and uh, I would say tragic is how uh, they are putting so much, many resources into developing so many different kinds of drones and other robotic warfare. When we say drones, we're talking about things that fly and that don't have human beings in them. Well, a lot of these drones are tiny, and so of course you're not going to stick a pilot in the cockpit there. Um, but uh, the drones range in size now from the size of an insect uh, that could be flying outside the window right now with very sophisticated camera equipment on the size of an insect uh, to the size of a, a hummingbird, and there's a drone called a hummingbird. Um, there is a company in Southern California, California called Aero Environment that is developing a series of these small drones. And they say that they are using nature and trying to find out the beauty of nature that keeps things flying in the air and sure. all the sensors that are on moss and insects and hummingbirds and to mimic that to create these drones. Um, now, they can be the size of, uh, in fact, many of the drones used by our military are drones that fit in a soldier's backpack and can be launched individually by the soldier. And it's from the cameras that they will have uh, that they can uh, get a, a picture of what's happening either in the battlefield or inside a home that they're going to go into. Um, there are the Predator and Reaper drones that are the size of maybe a small airplane. They're the ones that have the Hellfire missiles. When they were first developed, they were developed by an Israeli engineer who was working for the Israeli military. And they were just going to be for surveillance. Uh, but then uh, they realized they could easily strap on weapons onto these uh, small airplanes. And they became lethalized drones. Now, that's very important to know because uh, the drones that are being sold overseas by the United States, by Israel. Israel is selling 85% of all the drones that are being exported. Israel alone is selling drones to 50 different countries. And then the Chinese see this as a wonderful growth industry. And they have dozens of different kinds of drones that they're now producing. Now they're saying, but we are selling the surveillance drones, not the lethalized drones. Well, the lethalized drones were surveillance drones as well. And it is simple to, it is so simple to weaponize them that we have an example of an American who is living here who decided he was going to get a, a, a souped up model airplane and put explosives on it. Little did he know he was working with an agent of the FBI on this plot. Uh, and so he never got a chance to launch his drone. Uh, but he, as an individual with a physics background, uh, was able to do that himself. So there's many different drone sizes and shapes. Uh, there are thousands upon thousands of drones that the Pentagon has now. And they are buying up drones as fast as they are being produced. Uh, as uh, Bob said, uh, Southern California is the number one place for the production of drones. Uh, a, a company called uh, General Atomics is the number one producer of the killer drones. But these weapon manufacturers are very smart, and they have learned over the years that you want to produce these drones in many different states around the country so that you will be able to say, jobs, jobs, and you'll be able to have a lot of Congress people in your pocket. And that's precisely what the drone manufacturers have done. So it is now a multi-billion dollar business. And some of you might have heard of Jody Williams, who is uh, the woman who won the Nobel Peace Prize for her work to ban landmines and uh, then subsequently cluster bombs. And I talked to her about this. Uh, she is absolutely appalled at these um, uh, killer drones. But she also understands how when she did her work to ban landmines, uh, there wasn't a lobby like there is today around uh, lethal drones. She said that Landmines are chunk change compared to the billions of dollars 
that are now being made from research and production of uh, drones. And that means it's just going to be even harder to try to get an international convention to regulate the use of these drones, but it's something that we have to do.